Good morning. The opening sentence for the first Sunday of Lent is, we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose son fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, but did not sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. My rock and my Redeemer. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is a time for reflection as we remember Jesus being tempted in the wilderness by the devil. The liturgical color is purple, which symbolizes repentance, sacrifice, and preparation. In the church lectionary that lays out all the readings for the year, Ash Wednesday and the days in Lent are set aside as days of special devotion to be observed by acts of discipline and self-denial. Many Christians give up something that they enjoy in Lent. And while fasting is important and will bring us closer to God, it's better if we can add to that doing something positive. For example, spend more time reading the Bible studying the scriptures more deeply, and spend more time in prayer. In Lent, we need to repent and turn away from the things that distract us from our spiritual journey. As I was reading the gospel in preparation for today, the words, it is written, jumped off the page to me. And in fact, they occur four times in these 11 verses. I believe that this is to be our discipline for this Lent, to read and study daily what is written in the scriptures. When I discussed this with Reverend Kim, she said, we do need a theme for Lent, and I think we have just found it. It is written. So where shall we begin with this discipline? If you start today with the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, and read a chapter a day, and continue with the Gospel of Luke. By Monday, Thursday, the day before Good Friday, you will have completed two of the Gospels, which are accounts of the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
However, I'm encouraging you not to stop there, but to continue after Easter with the Gospel of John. One way we learn to hear God's voice is by reading scripture. Often something will jump off the page to grab your attention. And even though you have read the words or heard them many times before, The gospel account that we read today occurs after the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. This was when, as our Lord was baptized, the dove descended from heaven and landed on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. By this sign, God gave his son the power to start his earthly ministry. I wonder what Jesus was feeling at this point. He knew he had a mission to accomplish, and he knew his Father God has given him the go-ahead. However, the next thing we read is, the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. What do you think? Was he ready to go out and choose his disciples and start preaching and teaching and healing? Was he turned in a different direction by the Spirit? There are many accounts in the Bible of people changing direction at God's command. For instance, we have Moses, whose life changed completely when he encountered the burning bush. And Joseph, whom God used powerfully when his brothers sold him as a slave. Do you remember the wise men who followed the star to find the newborn king? After they had opened their gifts and presented them to Jesus and worshipped him, they were warned by God in a dream to return to their home via a different route. Our lives too can be turned around by God and we may be guided to take a different route from what we have planned. Have you ever been turned in a different direction by a voice or a nudge from God? I can think of several times when it has happened to me. On a day when I wasn't planning on visiting Riverwood, I found myself going there, only to find the lady I was to visit had been transferred to the hospital. I was able to follow and sit with her in her fear as she awaited test results and the doctor's verdict. On another occasion, during one of our Wednesday noon services, as I was sitting in the pew, I heard God say, I want you to pray over Reverend Kim. I will heal her and bless her through you. My initial reaction was, who, me? Reverend Kim had had a stress test and there was some concern about some heart damage that occurred when she had a heart attack when she had COVID in the summer. I got up and left the church because I felt unworthy. But in the parking lot, I heard God say, go back and pray with Reverend Kim. And so I went back and I told Kim what had happened. Immediately, she knelt at the altar rail and I placed my hands on her head. It was an experience I will never forget. We both felt God's presence strengthening us in a powerful way. And Reverend Kim was healed. Thanks be to God. She has not had any more heart-related symptoms since that moment. She's had an echocardiogram showing all is well. It wasn't me. God worked through me as he promised. In Lent, we're invited to make some quiet time to get to know Jesus better, to hear his voice. Will you be sent in a different direction from where you plan to go? We read that Jesus was driven into the wilderness to be tempted. The word for temptation can also be translated as testing. Will we be tested or tempted? 
we can be sure that God isn't going to tempt us to do something bad. But we may well be tested to see if we will put our whole trust in him and in his word. Also, remember that Jesus was tested by Satan when he had just been affirmed by God as his son. So we too can expect to be tested when we are getting closer to our Savior. We must be prepared. How can we prepare ourselves to resist the devil in the testing? The answer is in this passage, as we look closer at it. Each time Jesus is tested, he responds, it is written, and quotes a verse from the Bible, the word of God. The first quote captures the essence of the whole. One shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so, here we have the perfect opportunity in Lent to study the word of God as written in the Bible. We can learn some key verses so that we will be prepared when we are tested by Satan, who knows our weak, vulnerable places to zero in on. How about these words to start with from this morning's gospel? I will live by the word of God. I will worship and give thanks only to the Lord our God. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, this is written, Jesus said, I am the true vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus and knowing him through the scriptures, we can do nothing. Join me this Lent in studying the life of Jesus as recorded in the Gospels so that we will hear his voice and be guided by him. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.